1. Here is portrayed the rather rare bussing nag type S towing wheel tractor or rodschlepper. Seen here operating away from its normal setting of urban environment to off-road conditions. These were commercial diesel wheel tractors, also employed by the German armed forces, Wehrmacht and Luftwaffe. It had a payload of 15 to 16 tons, and around 1,000 vehicles were built between 1935 to 37. 2. Here we have a typical scene of a truck convoy, stuck on a stretch of road which is impassable to wheeled vehicles. Several crew members are trying to improve conditions by laying bushes and branches in an effort to stiffen the mud and prevent wheels from sinking. Most of the personnel are bare-chested showing us that temperatures weren't adverse putting this scene on late spring early summer. In terms of vehicles, we can identify an SDKFZ 7-8-ton on the left with a 140-horse power engine, identified by the front fenders, lateral cutout fender with foot rest and engine grille. 3. A 150mm SFH-18 heavy field howitzer artillery piece initial horse-drawn version with two trailers and metal wheels, although lighter than later variants it was deemed too cumbersome to set up and was surpassed by more advanced versions of this gun, namely the SFH-18-43, which was the most produced variant. The gun is in travel mode, on the side of the road, probably waiting for transportation. Regarding the camouflaged ambulance it seems to be a Citroen Type 23, identified by the lateral middle window and road fenders. 4. Another heavy field howitzer 150mm SFH-18-43, although it seems abandoned, it is actually in transport mode, where the barrel was released from its recuperator hydraulic piston and moved into a recoiled position. We see nevertheless, oil stains in the piston front, over the barrel. It has a front boogie, left wheels, which was dismounted when being set up for firing. The crew then opened the spades and installed additional wedges in the spades for better recoil grip. This particular gun has some camouflage applied but it is almost hidden under the intense dust and mud layer. These guns together with the 10.5 cm light field howitzer Le FH-18 were the backbone of the artillery regiments of infantry divisions, which varied in size depending on the year of the war. 5. Another Eastern Front image, with a Panzer II Model B, retrofitted for tropical use but sent instead to Russia, identified by the angled hull front, mantlet armor disposition, the large stowage bin on the left fender and no-tech light on the right. It belongs to the 33rd Panzer Regiment of the 11 Panzer Division, known as Gespenster Division as was the 7 Panzer Division also known, trudging slowly along a field. In Russia it was common for very intense periods of rain hit small areas of the front, even during the summer, turning fields like this, suitable only to tracked vehicles. Notice also the uncommon repeated ghost marking on the hull and turret. It already carries a battle scar on the turret edge, a probable penetration, repaired and covered by the maintenance company, known as, Verkstadt Company. 6. A very similar image to the previous one, portraying a Panzer III in similar conditions, trudging over a muddy field possibly towing a light vehicle, which seems to be a Bedford MWD light open cabin truck, repurposed from the British Army. The Panzer III is a Model H, command variant, showing AR-03 number on the turret. Unit is unknown. This variant is identified by the aerial frame for the FUG-8 radio over the engine deck, the round pistol port on the radio operator position, lack of toolbox and the type of wooden antenna holder on the left fender. These command vehicles or Panzer Befills had a fixed turret and a dummy gun because of the space needed to accommodate the extra radios. 7. A dramatic scene of a prime mover SDKFZ-8 12 tons struggling to pull a heavy 3-ton trailer, Einheit's Anhanger E3. This half-track variant is identified by the large rear stowage space with double doors, shape of the fender over the sprocket, reduced space of foot rest on the fender, sprocket wheel and towing pintle. The half-track is already axle deep, if the underbelly of the chassis gets too deep in the mud, a curious sucking effect pulls the vehicle down, preventing it to move at all without further assistance. Notice on the hood, a common tactic to keep engines warm and less susceptible to freeze, 
by the use of a straw blanket, and sometimes wool blankets were also used for this purpose. 8. A joyful scene of two half-tracks in a sea of mud. The left vehicle is trying to extricate the right one which is bogged down and stuck. Both vehicles are the SDKFZ251 Model B1, identified by the engine lateral hatches and bolts on the front plate. Both have the metal framing for launching the rocket-propelled artillery Werfram N40, 3 on each side. It was known among the troops as the Stuka Zu Fuss, or Stuka on foot. It was the same system as the heavy-diameter Nebelwerfer 41 installed on a trailer. It fired a 40 kg warhead up to 4 km depending on the ammo type. Note the whiteness of the vehicle on the right, which is missing the left fender and doesn't have the MG-34 mounted on the shield. As seen on other images, the personnel are trying to improve track grip using brushes. 9. Keeping with half-tracks, here we also have a SDKFZ-251, which seems to be a Model C, the regular Slash-1 variant. It carries a wooden plank on the side and is apparently successfully moving over very liquid stretch of mud. Take note on the overall muddy appearance and the odd position of the soldier on the right which seems to be seated over the cargo. There is another soldier lying down over the engine, which could be a wounded soldier being transported to a dressing station. There seems to be a 42 marking on the unpainted engine louver over the muffler. 10. Another sea of mud, where an SDKFZ-10 half-track is towing an anti-tank gun PAK-38 50mm, with the gun breech and optical sights nicely covered, which is uncommon to see. All the crew members but the driver expectantly watch backward to see if the motorcycle with sidecar manages to go through this pool of mud. Notice the very wide road, which it could well be on the military maps of the period, considered a main road, or even an highway since it also has telephone posts. Some civilians look at all the fuss on the high embankment on the left. 11. A very common scene throughout the war, an SDKFZ 7-8-ton half-track, identified by the spoke front wheels, three outer road wheels and fender shape and cutout with footrest, stands by, to extricate a staff car stuck in the mud. The cables are already lying in front of the vehicle, both the SDKFZ7 and 8 had a motor-powered winch under the cabin for vehicle recovery. The car seems to be a Mercedes-Benz 170V, open top, identified by the position of the door handler, engine louvers, lateral hood spring and lateral mirror. The pennant it carries seems to be an officer's divisional staff, in grayish-green with a silver eagle and white outline. 12. Best for last. A super interesting muddy trench scene. We have a wide selection of weapons, including a light mortar, the Russian 1940 M4050 mm mortar, two Russian Mosin Nagant rifles on the floor. The standing non-commissioned officer is holding a German K98 rifle. There is also a PPSH-41 submachine gun behind the mortar, and a DP-27 Dekjarev light machine gun. The sitting soldier with a grim face has a steel hand grenade on his belt. Quite the arsenal for a German trench. All soldiers have the winter reversible parkas and the right soldier covered his helmet with mud as camouflage. Я Иосиф Сталин и я одобряю это сообщение.